a judge's husband charged with driving drunk. Hours later, the phone calls started. I just want to ask you about the phone calls you made to the Bennettsville Police Department. No one persuaded you or used their authority to persuade you to drop the ticket. Once you start digging and you start asking questions, the more questions you start to have. Well, one year ago, Bennettsville City Police charged a Marble County probate judge's husband with drinking and driving. But within days, the officer who locked him up dismissed the charge. Why? The chief believed it was influence from members of the county judicial system, so he asked SLED to investigate. And now one year later, we know exactly what SLED did and didn't do. Here's Chief Investigative Reporter Jody Barr with Under the Influence, a Queen City News investigation. If you got a highway patrolman in there, come on, 1541 behind a white color Tahoe. With excessive speed right now, he's riding in the grass. Turn highway patrol, everybody's in it, Donaldson County. But if you would like them to come this way, they can. Last February, you could notify the city is. This Tahoe's coming in running probably 80 miles an hour on 15 now. We're passing the high school. City is, you got a Tahoe. Coming into the city about 80 miles an hour, all over the road, got a county unit behind it. A Marlboro County Sheriff's deputy tailed a white Tahoe eight miles from a nightclub into the Bennettsville city limits. The radio traffic shows the deputy had reasons to stop him, but didn't. Not until Jermaine McCoy rolled into town. The dash camera shows Marlboro County Sheriff's Deputy Josh Hatcher was the first to confront McCoy, while two Bennettsville police officers stood by. As the men talked, a Bennettsville police supervisor decided someone needed to investigate whether McCoy was impaired. Go ahead and notify us. People got HP closed. 209, I already gave them a 21, and they're nowhere near Marlboro County at this moment. The deputy certified in DUI detection did not perform the field sobriety test, so the city called in its DUI officer, Jonathan Beggs, to test McCoy. Five minutes later, the test ended, and Officer Beggs arrested him. Good. Beggs charged McCoy with driving under the influence. And the ride to jail also gave the officer additional evidence. Inside the jail, Beggs walked McCoy to the breathalyzer room, but McCoy refused to blow. Now you know it's gonna automatically suspend your license, right? I know. Where again, McCoy admits to drinking. Yo, let, yo, I come from the Ellison Club, so you know I've been drinking, man. That's that trap, man. Oh, I don't know where you came from, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was sitting right there. Beggs was across town on another call when Deputy Josh Hatcher first encountered McCoy. Beggs' supervisor, Sergeant Dozier Rames, called Beggs to the scene. Beggs, certified in breathalyzer operation and a field sobriety test instructor, went to the scene and did what he was asked to do. All while the deputy stood by watching. But why didn't the deputy handle this from the start? We later learned he didn't have a body camera or dash camera, and Hatcher and every other deputy was under a directive from the sheriff to avoid working traffic cases. We're only running three, maybe four people at night. And if somebody gets tied up on a call for two or three hours, then I only got maybe two people then working the entire county, and it puts us in a strain when we do that. Although the highway patrol claimed no trooper was anywhere around that night, the dispatch recordings from officers on scene show that might not be true. 18 minutes into the stop. I know you advised we didn't have a trooper in the, the county, but we just saw one pull, up, pull off right here at the Sprint store, ain't been five minutes ago. Marlboro County Sheriff Larry McNeil says although his deputy could have stopped McCoy, the deputy did nothing wrong. From what you've learned about the stop, what you heard in that dispatch recording, do you still believe sitting here today that that was a lawful, appropriate stop that night? Yeah. Based on what he said, what I heard, it was a lawful stop. But Judge Renika McCoy didn't think so. She's the elected Marlboro County probate judge and Jermaine McCoy's wife. 
when the sun rose the next morning. Judge Renika McCoy was on the phone with Bennettsville's assistant police chief, Greg Williams. You say you were concerned about those calls. What would be concerning about that? You have to take into consideration there's some professional boundaries there that exist for a reason, which is exactly why I guess we're here today. Bennettsville Police Chief Kevin Miller had no idea the probate judge called his second in charge the day of her husband's DUI arrest because his own men never told him. The chief also had no idea the probate judge spoke with his patrol lieutenant Sammy Crosland asking about the DUI stop. Again, because neither of his right-hand men told him anything about any of this. Not until we came to town three weeks after this DUI arrest, after a tipster asked us to investigate. How did you find out that this DUI arrest ever happened in the first place? Ironically enough, um, as in the past, you've been the one to bring it to my attention. What did you do once you found out? Well, immediately, as I have in the past, I started digging and started digging fast. Miller says he also later learned both Judge McCoy and her father, Judge Grover McQueen, had both not only discussed the case with his officers, but with Sheriff Larry McNeil as well. Judge McQueen is the lead city judge and a county magistrate judge. I did receive a phone call, yes. Mm -hmm. And was that from Judge Renika McCoy? Yes. Did she ever ask you to intervene or to do something on her behalf? No, no, she did not. A day or so after the sheriff met with Judge McCoy inside the courthouse, her father, Judge Grover McQueen, also questioned the sheriff about the stop. We kind of ran in each other and saw the magistrate, and he said, look, I needed to talk to you about something. I said, okay. He said, I've got some concerns about one of your officers uh, about speeding um, and writing tickets uh, without a speed measuring device. Within four days of McCoy's arrest, with two judges questioning law enforcement about the stop, Officer Jonathan Beggs dismissed the DUI charge, something the chief called highly unusual. The chief wanted to know whether those calls pressured his officer to drop the case. Or do you believe at this point you've been told the whole story and you know the whole story sitting here today? No, but I think we'll find out eventually. Is this supposed to happen in, in the police business? No, but unfortunately it does sometimes. Coming up, the chief asked the state's top law enforcement agency for help. The reason I believe I am where I am today is because of, you know, me always trying to do the right thing, even though it's not the popular thing. In this case, it's definitely not the popular thing. And why is that? When you look at all the potential people involved in this, you know, even in your own department, but it definitely can rattle some cages. Did you find it odd that a member of the court here in Marlboro County was calling you about her husband's DUI charge? Honestly, I looked at it, she was a, being a concerned wife. And after a single interview. So again, no one persuaded you or used their authority to persuade you to drop the ticket. SLED decided to close its investigation. Do you believe that was thorough? I will look at the case and All tell right. you once I look at it. When Under the Influence continues after the break. Within hours of this traffic stop last February, Marlboro County Probate Judge Renika McCoy was on the phone with Bennettsville Police Department Brass. What do you know about that? It's very unusual. It's not something that you see very often. However, that's the other part of this mystery, right, is why. Chief Kevin Miller says because of the people involved, he could not investigate this himself. He called SLED for help to figure out whether those calls had anything to do with causing his officer to drop the prosecution of Jermaine McCoy. I appreciate you meeting with us. Ain't no problem. I ain't got nothing to hide. Lieutenant Sammy Crosland was the second officer Judge Renika McCoy contacted after the judge first called his boss, Assistant Chief Greg Williams. Did you find it odd that uh, a member of the court here in Marlboro County was calling you about her husband's DUI charge? Honestly, I looked at it. She was a, being a concerned wife, but she never threw a tight out to me. And if that would have been present, I really would have called on that. Like, you know, just because you probate don't mean that you can get this dismissed. And I told I said, well, I'll look into it. I said, I'll look into it to see if he was right in what he did and wrong what he did. Crosland kept his promise. He found Officer Jonathan Beggs and questioned him about the stop, not once, but at least two times. I talked to Jonathan Beggs about it. He kind of felt kind of, kind of some kind of way about it. And I was like, well, you got to do something about it because that's your case.
Croslin told Beggs the city had no business making the stop in the first place, arguing the deputy should have handled his own investigation. How can you stand in court and tell the judge, yeah, y'all, uh, we observed Mr. McCoy coming in the city of Spencerville, traveling at high rate of speed, and he was drunk. Beggs got called off from another location to the location after they stopped. So when you pulled up, what did you see? Nothing. But you want to get him out of the car and feel surprised. What about the other officer was there? What about the deputy that saw it? Get him at... But could, we don't want it. Yeah. Could that deputy have been called in as a witness to he establish? Have. He could have. Not saying he was wrong in what he did. He did what the supervisor told him to do. But sometimes you got to be smart. Do you think that that call from the judge, your conversation with this officer, put some pressure on him to make a decision he otherwise would not have made? To be honest, Mr. Ball, I don't think so because in his mind, he was already going to drop because he already told me when we talked about it. SLED agreed to open an investigation into the chief's concerns of misconduct last April. We held off publishing this report then to give SLED time and space to work. We're here to discuss a situation in regards to a DUI citation that you have dropped. Officer Jonathan Beggs was the first person SLED interviewed. Beggs, a field training officer and a certified field sobriety test instructor, told SLED he made fatal errors in his testing of McCoy, and he forgot the most basic step of any arrest. Once you placed him under arrest, did you read a Miranda or any type of administrative anything? I did not. All right. Are you supposed to? You're supposed to, yes. Told him the breath test part. We got the Miranda part. So after you wrote that ticket that night, you had you already made your mind you were going to drop that? Uh, probably about 35, 30, 45 minutes after. Okay. I was like, that was horrible. So Sammy didn't ask you to drop the ticket? No. Greg didn't ask you to drop the ticket? No. No one asked you to drop a ticket. No. We're here just to make sure that you didn't, you weren't intimidated no. and that you received nothing in favor for you hey, to drop this ticket. I got, I, I would, whether I took it to court or dropped it, I was getting nothing either way. Like, I don't know her. I don't know her husband. And I don't care about Judge McQueen. Not, Judge McQueen's a great guy. Right. But you couldn't do nothing for me that would benefit benefit. Right. Like I'm leaving. Well, I think that's kind of one of those things is they want to make sure that no one made any promises to you to give you any favors. They want to make sure you didn't commit misconduct. No. Okay. Um, meaning as in taking any bribes or favors or no. somebody said they'd look out for you. They'd help you do whatever. Like how? You know what I'm saying? How, yeah. how are you going to look out for me? Like how? But the main thing is, is no matter what anyone may have offered you, you would not have accepted it because it'd be criminally wrong. It'd be criminally wrong, but again, no one offered me anything. Okay. So. Just want to make sure I get that clarified. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> This was your court. Grover McQueen is the chief city judge and also a Marlboro County magistrate. He's also Judge Renika McCoy's father and Jermaine McCoy's father-in-law. Croslin told us he never talked with Judge McQueen about the case. Were you aware at the time of who her father was? McQueen? Yes, I worked with uh, Judge McQueen for years because you know I've been here for the city for 26 years. Yes, sir. I extensively known. I know he's the magistrate with a. Uh, the county and he works part time with us, yes, but sir. I knew that would have been a conflict of interest for him getting in it because that's his son in law, mm -hmm. and I know he won't touch that. And I haven't talked to him anyway mm -hmm. personally about that anyway. And I've seen him, spoke to him, but as far as having a conversation about the whole thing, nah, I know he's smart than that. I know he, he can't touch that. I know he can't. He's smart than that. But Lieutenant Croslin told Sled he did talk to Judge McQueen. If I was there, I think I would have handled it a different way, but like I told, um, Judge McQueen, I just don't understand how we can testify something that we, we um, didn't see. And that was in the conversation. He didn't say too much about it because that was his son-in-law. Um, he kind of like, you know, wanted to get some answers himself. He said he was going to talk to the people at the sheriff's office. And I said, that might be a good idea because at this point, I don't even know myself why we got involved. But after that, that was it. I had nothing to do with the ticket. Nothing. And would not have to do it because it's my son-in-law. When we interviewed Judge Grover McQueen, he never mentioned talking to Crosby. Uh, I didn't have any contact with the officer at all about it. Uh, who, the officer Biggs, who was no longer there, I had no contact with him, no discussion. I have not discussed it with the police chief. 
uh, or anything about the ticket. But that changed the next business day after our interview. The sled file shows the judge called a meeting with the chief, assistant chief Greg Williams and Lieutenant Sammy Crosland, a meeting the chief walked out of. The chief told sled the judge was intimidating and threatening. Instead of interviewing the judge, sled captain Glenn Wood called McQueen to counsel him. McQueen admitted the meeting got heated and told Sled he understood the perception of judges questioning the officers. And Sled wrote McQueen felt better about everything after talking with the Sled captain. Good morning, Judge McCoy. Hey, I'm Jody with Queen City News out of Charlotte. Judge McCoy would never schedule an interview with us to explain her side of this. The sled file shows agents never interviewed her or pulled communication records to get to the bottom of what the police chief wanted investigated. And I just want to ask you about the phone calls you made to the Bennettsville Police Department. Can you tell us what the purpose of those calls were? Jody, what did my interview say on my emails? I'm at work. Judge McCoy sent us an email 10 days before we found her at the courthouse, denying our request to interview her. She said she'd answer our questions in writing, but never did. The judge then sent this disposition form, showing days after her husband's DUI charge, the officer dropped it. Can you tell us the purpose of those calls? Was it to pressure those officers oh, not at all. to not drop all. the tickets? Not at all. Just for them to look into it on some the road, you know, the interview with, I mean, the stop was illegal, you know. But that the Bendisville Police Department, that, that DUI charge from your husband was dropped within days of your phone call. Did you talk to the Bendisville Police I Department? Did. Okay. When I'm going into work. Do you see how this looks at this point? How? I mean, this, this ticket was dropped in record time, man. Uh, contact my attorney. Okay. You can give them my number. SLED's investigation spanned three months, but a note in the case file shows just one week into the investigation, at the end of this first interview with Officer Beggs, Captain Glenn Wood decided SLED would close the investigation as unfounded. Beggs and Crosland were the only ones of the 10 people involved in this case to be interviewed. SLED never formally questioned either of the judges. Good morning, sir. Here you are again in a parking lot. Yeah, I see that. That's what your favorite place to meet people, I believe. Well, that's what I have to do when you guys won't respond to interview requests. Yeah. Sled Chief Mark Hill ignored our request to interview him about his agent's handling of the case. Here's every communication I've tried okay. to give to your office. All right. You'll see I've marked no response. There's another okay. no response. Okay. I'll be happy to look at him. If a police chief is making an allegation that he believes that a probate judge making a phone call to his department led Dude, to... I'm not going to answer any questions about this, okay? What? I'll be happy to find out, okay. and I'll be happy to try and get you a response if the case is not still pending. It's closed. If We've it's, got the records from okay. you guys. Well, if, it's, if you've got the records in, I'll be happy to look into it, get back to you, and let you know something. Will you schedule an interview with us? I don't know whether I will or not. What would you, you know, keep you from I, I doing I think it? you know I don't do a lot of interviews. Yeah, we don't ask you a lot yeah, either until yeah. we feel like it's absolutely uh, necessary. Well, again, I, I, I'll make that decision once I look at it and see, see, what I, see what I think about it. We told the chief the questions we had about his agent's handling of the investigation so he'd know what to look for in his review. Your agent's investigation shows they <laughs> never interviewed the judge. Only two people got interviewed and they closed the case. And, and the question we have is, when you review that, do you believe that was thorough? I will look at the case and tell right. you once I look at it. Even though SLED says it found no evidence of misconduct, Sheriff Larry McNeil believes something more fundamental was violated. Sometimes it's incumbent upon family members to understand the roles that they have to play as well when certain people in certain positions. That the appearance of something cannot, yeah can mean a lot to the public. It does. Uh, and, and even uh, with good intentions, sometimes things can go crazy. Sled Chief Mark Kill never agreed to that interview. His press office sent us a statement calling their agent's work a thorough, unbiased, and professional investigation, finding no evidence of misconduct. Kill never addressed our questions about only interviewing two of ten people involved in this case. The Bennettsville police chief told me he's implementing a new policy where if an officer wants to drop a charge, they'll have to now go before a judge and do it in open court. The penalty for not doing this ranges from suspension to termination. The chief's goal to prevent this from ever happening again.